Okay, here we are. I just told Susan we're going live. Get ready. <laughs> we're going live. Third weekend in a row, we're going backpacking. Come with us. This week, we're at, and I'll take you over to the trailhead, Foley Ridge. We are going to be able to see the sisters in all their glory. We do have a wildlife, wild, <laughs> wildlife, <laughs> wilderness permit that we have to deal with. So we will get that going. But I wanted to uh, just let you know where we are, what we're doing. We have some other people here. It's going to be fantastic. And we're going to do a little Q&A. We're going to pack my bag so you can kind of see how that goes. Susan is pretty much all set, but we'll get that going. All right. Okay. Catch you then. Hiking is happiness at 60. We're going to pack my pack. Just talk about how things go together real quickly. Because uh, Susan's chomping at the bit to get out hiking. So sleeping bag goes in the bottom first. You kind of want to put your heaviest things at the bottom, which the sleeping bag is not. But the uh, good thing is it protects other things. So we've got sleeping bag. Cook stove. Heavy. Fuel. Relatively heavy. Tent. Quite heavy. Sleeping pad. And I just want to tuck these things in as best I can around. Water purification. Toiletries. The very important camp seat. Yes. Oh, uh, some auxiliary power. I think I'll put that in the top. Clothing. And also, this this uh, second says my pillow, because it's a pillowcase. And then I put my other clothes, coat, all that stuff in here too. So it has two purposes, which is the best. I'm going to bring... Uh, Another pair of shoes so that I don't have to wear my hiking boots all the time in camp. Makes it a little more comfortable. We've got some food. And one thing you might notice is I have color-coded bags. All my bags are color-coded because from just the very beginning I've always carried my food in this yellow bag. So. I've just always continued with that, so I can find things relatively easily <clears throat> at uh, at different times. We've got the pot and pan program. The most important thing, coffee cup. Very happy about that. So that, oh, I'm going to put in my vest. Kind of jam that in here, kind of tuck everything together, and then camera. It'll go in last. So these other items here I'll put in my top. Things I need to get to easily. I have my little bag that of hiking and I can carry things that work out. And that's it. That's it. So we will put everything else together, take one last check, and then we're off. Rhododendrons are blooming. Foley Ridge Trail. Let's see how this works. Let's go camping. Let's go hiking. Let's go backpacking. Let's have fun. An adventure. 
Are you up for it? We are. It's a beautiful day. The first time I've hiked this trail in quite a few years and we are going to get into a section of woods that was involved in a massive forest fire last year. If I'm not mistaken, uh, somebody built a fire to get warm or dry their clothes or something and it got out of hand and it burned for a month. It was really bad. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. So we're maybe, oh, I don't even think we're a quarter mile into the Foley Ridge Trail, which is kind of typical. And then you'll run into uh, some signage. And this now is we're getting into the Three Sisters Wilderness. Whoops. So we just made that transition to wilderness. So no bikes no mechanical devices, chainsaws, you know, any kind of machines. All of the trail maintenance has to be done by hand with hand saws. You can't bring a chainsaw in here and do this. So interesting. And it, it should, you know, stay pretty much the way it is right now for many years to come because of the wilderness de designation. We're actually quite close to the sisters, so we'll see them on this trip. That's one of the reasons we're here. We want to bring you along so you can see the sisters. I was just telling Susan, this is bear grass. And there's a, a fleshy root that bears will dig up and they'll eat. So hence the name bear grass. And here's one that's putting up a flower. They don't put up flowers every year. Uh, I don't know what their schedule is, but there'll be some in a group like this that will be putting up a flower, but not all. So it's really great when the, you come into an area that has quite a few bear grass plants putting up flowers. And it's just beautiful because there'll be just like a sea of white flowers out there. Pretty cool stuff. For you people that are not Oregonians, we have some just amazing slugs. This one is not a big one. There are some huge slugs out there, but you gotta watch them on the trail because you don't really wanna step on them. And they'll just be making their way along, doing their little slug thing. Looking for some plant to munch on. Mr. Sluggo, we just encountered the remnants of the fire on this trail. So if I'm not mistaken, first time hiking this trail since the fire, we're going to be in the fire area from this point forward. Unless the fire gets up into the canopy, big dug fur like this one ahead of us have no problem. They can go through a fire relatively unscathed. Matter of fact, the tree right behind Susan, as you can see, is healthy and alive. The bark on the dug fur are very thick at the base. Um, fire really was always a natural 
part of this environment and it cleans, it cleans out, out the understory and then there's not a big fire. The big fires, they just don't exist. They, what they call a mega fire now. So, you know, it's, it's heartbreaking, but it's also understandable. Fire was always a natural part of the environment. And it's funny that we're still learning. Trying to understand the ecosystem. But we are. We chose this trail today so we could show you the fire and also we'll be able to show you the sisters. So, you know, it's all part of the program best to embrace it and try to understand it so that's what we're doing that's our goal I hope in some ways it resonates with you spark something to learn to understand that tree's been through many fires Burnt right up to it. Hardly again, hardly even got involved in the tree at all. A little bit up there. So as you can see, the trail comes up. And then the trail used to go up there but they had some erosion or something maybe had to do with the fire, so they abandoned that section of trail. Typically, it'll look just like that. They'll throw debris in to make it obscure the trail, and in a few years, it will be totally obscured. You'll never know it was there. So then they make a new trail, which is what will follow around it, and it looks new not doesn't have a big rut they've well in a sense choose the easiest path for the new trail and easy for hiking easy for maintaining easy for construction of trail so that's fairly typical all done by hand when you're in wilderness ah got a couple trees down here Oh, keep going, Susan. Thank you.
fire wasn't too intense here. Didn't get up in the canopy at all. Just burned along and cleaned up the ground, killed all the little trees. So, you know, if possible that because we're on a little ridge here, the fire became more intense. If you were here, you'd be quite surprised. The, the fire really went through here and just sterilized the ground. It's unfortunate. But the saddest thing of all, of course, is it got hot enough and it got up into that tree, which that tree's bark at the bottom is thick enough to protect it but it got up into the canopy in here and it burned that tree and killed it. That old giant tree. It's been there for hundreds of years. And finally, a campfire that somebody lit to dry their clothes ended its life. Now it stands in in testament of that day. In the years to come, all this will fall down and this will actually be a beautiful ridge to hike on. You'll have a great view. But until then, it stands on that terrible day when fire came through in testament of that. In, in Oregon, I don't know about other places in the country, but in Oregon, when it's oh August, September, it's so dry, you do not start fires. Don't flick cigarette ashes or cigarette butts. Don't shoot fireworks. Don't do anything that creates a spark because, boom, it'll just go up and it's virtually unstoppable.